Hey second graders, it's Mrs. Harris. I am going to start a chapter book. We are going to read Mr. Peabody and Sherman. Sherman's Awesome Adventures. Get a nice spot, sit back, and enjoy the read. Chapter one. My name is Sherman and I am seven years old and I live with my dad. Sounds pretty normal, right? That's because you haven't met my dad. His name is Mr. Peabody, and he's a dog. Mr. Peabody is also a genius. He flies around the world performing scientific experiments and meeting important people. The best part is that I get to go with him. Mr. Peabody adopted me when I was a baby. It didn't make sense to some people. Why would a dog genius want to raise a human baby? It made perfect sense to Mr. Peabody. Sure, he had done a lot in his life. But he always said that something or someone was missing. That someone was me. I feel proud that Mr. Peabody chose me as his son. Being raised by a world traveling genius has its perks, like the way back. For example, the way back is totally awesome. Top secret time machine. Mr. Peabody invented the way back so we could tour history together. There's nothing like her learning history firsthand, he always says. Mr. Peabody and I traveled through time and space, visiting all of history's super cool moments. We skated with woolly mammoths. We ate at the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims. We took part in the French Revolution. We make a great team. Mr. Peabody likes to teach me things, and I love to learn. Sometimes, though, we run into trouble on our trips. Let's just say that an encounter with George Washington, an ancient Egyptian wedding, and a gigantic black hole almost ruined my life. It all started on the first day of school. Mr. Peabody drove me to school in our motorcycle and sidecar. He had plenty of last minute instructions for me on the way. It was like he wasn't sure I could handle things on my own. When we got there, I leapt out of the sidecar. Bye! Wait, Mr. Peabody cried. He handed me a small silver gadget. Thanks, I said. I turned it over in my palm. What is it? It's a dog whistle, he replied. I blew hard into the thin whistle. I didn't hear anything. It doesn't work, I announced. Mr. Peabody rubbed his ears. It works fine, Sherman, he said, but only dogs can hear it. Oh, I said with a shrug. Cool. I shoved it into my pocket and walked toward the school. Behind me, Mr. Peabody shouted, no matter what challenges you face, no matter how far away I seem, I am always here for you. Bye, I called again. Mr. Peabody sure had the first day dad jitters. He wasn't used to me being on my own, but I was excited to start school. With all my time travels, I felt ready, especially for history class. Who is George Washington? My teacher asked the class. I waved my hand in the air. A girl with long blonde hair raised her hand quickly too. Sherman, the teacher called on me. The first president of the United States, I answered. Good job, the teacher said, nodding. I grinned. I tried to ignore the blonde girl scowling a few desks away. When President Washington was a boy, what kind of tree did he cut down? The teacher continued. Again, the girl's hand shot up at the same time as mine. The, te the teacher called on her. Penny Peterson? A cherry tree, Penny said. That story's not true, I declared. When I explained that George Washington never cut down a cherry tree, he also never said he couldn't tell a lie. People made up those stories to teach kids a lesson about lying. I could tell that my classmates, especially Penny, didn't believe me. Washington did cross the Delaware River in 1776, I continued. My dad took me there over the summer. We crossed the river too. I almost fell in. My class laughed. They didn't know it, but thanks to the while back, I had actually been there in 1776. I'd also actually fallen into the river. I'm pretty
pretty clumsy sometimes. Well, it looks like someone knows their history, my teacher noted. Penny crossed her arms and frowned. I didn't care if she believed me. I knew the truth. I forgot all about Penny until lunchtime. She came over to my table. What have you got there, Sherman? Penny said, eyeing my lunch. Kibbles or bits? Actually, I've got carrots, juice, and a tuna sandwich, I replied. So you eat human food then, she, answered, she asked. Yeah, why wouldn't I, I retorted. What was Penny getting at? Because you're a dog, she sneered. No, I am not, I said. Sure you are. Your dad's a dog, so you're a dog too. Here, I'll show you. She knocked my sandwich across the lunchroom with her hand. Fetch, she ordered. Everyone in the cafeteria gasped. I wasn't sure what to do. None of Mr. Peabody's lessons had covered this. Go on, doggy. Get your lunch, Penny teased. The crowd laughed. Sherman, get your food. Good doggy, Penny continued. I took a deep breath. I asked myself, what would Mr. Peabody do? He probably wouldn't care about everyone staring. But I did. Maybe if I just picked up the sandwich, Penny would stop. I bent over to get it. What's this? Penny asked. I spun around. My heart sank. Mr. Peabody's dog whistle dangled from Penny's finger. She must have swiped it from my pocket. What is it? A whistle? She asked. She blew into it. Doesn't even work. Give it back, I said. I tried to grab it from her hand. Jump, doggy, jump, she teased. She held it over my head. I started to lose my cool. I leapt toward Penny, but she caught me in a headlock. A minute, you're a dog, she commanded. Let me go, I ordered through clenched teeth. Not until you beg like a dog, replied Penny. The kids chanted, fight, fight. There was only one thing to do. If she wanted a dog, I'd show her a dog. I opened my mouth wide. <gasps> what do you think is going to happen next? Hmm. You'll have to wait to chapter two to find out. Until next time, happy reading.